not for the person we're here, we're all here for. There are a few Hmong here, but in my background, I was a, a Lutheran pastor. I know I'm in the financial field, but a lot of the people I've worked with over 13 years are the Hmong community. And if you uh, don't know this, they often, when I had church, the Hmong would come in 15, 20 minutes late. It was called Hmong time, all right? And we're on a little past time, but we're here for the, uh, everyone's still here, which is great. So I'd like, uh, obviously, you to hear from Alexander. And again, we, we consider this the official kickoff and so right after he's done, I'll uh, say two words before we conclude tonight. Um, welcome, Alexander and family. How are you guys doing tonight? I would like to thank all the wonderful speakers and everybody that showed up today to support me. And I would like to thank my beautiful wife for put, putting up with me, all right? Behind every strong man, is a strong woman. And God has blessed me with such amazing and a wonderful wife. And also some beautiful children. So, yeah, and uh, you guys, I have a lot to say. I have a lot to say. So, So, I, yeah, so um, I agree with everything that everyone said here. And there isn't much. I won't stay here to talk. I don't know. All right. So, my name is Alexander Buster, deputy, as you guys know, you know, by that wonderful uh, sign up there, you know. But, yeah, um, so. There isn't anything that I can say that hasn't been said earlier, but my story is simple. My story is nothing unique and is that, let, uh, let me formulate my thoughts. There's just so much going on here. There's just so much emotions and stuff going on. But my story is just that of a immigrant, you know? and. Someone who came from another country. And the country had a civil war, which wasn't really a civil war. It was a genocide. So we had to leave. So we had to escape. Well, actually leave. And I remember stories of my dad, which is back there. I remember him walking on this road with his luggage over his head and then he also put me and one of my other cousins over his head on that luggage and we walked for days and we went to the neighboring uh, country of Ivory Coast where we stayed there for about about two and a half years in the refugee camp and waited for us to come to this to this country right so the mentality is outside of this country is that people want to come here people love America people believe that America is the greatest country and so it really concerns me that where our country is heading but anyways uh, we came here after two and a half years in the refugee camp we came here and this was the third greatest day of my life okay and I say that because the first was when I gave my life to Jesus Christ the second was marrying my beautiful and wonderful wife and the third was coming here September 27, 1993. It was a cold day. I still remember, I have a memory of this. And people, people fantasize about America is the land of opportunity and there is gold out here. I mean, gold is just here, right? Money is on the uh, tree. 
I came, I was a little disappointed, you know, with that. I'm like, where is the cash, you know, like, where is the money? But what I can say that is priceless even more than money is the opportunity and the freedom, the life lessons you can learn by simply being in this country. So I came here, I got, uh, I came here and I spent majority of my life around this area. We moved down on 472 East Manihaha and we stayed there. But I never really left, left this, this area. I got married living on the east side. I bought a house on the east side. I, my kids were born on the east side. So I am very well attached to this community, okay? And, but growing up as an immigrant here, you come with this mentality that this place is full of opportunities and that you can learn and you can grow to be whatever you want to be. But then later on, you, later on, you start hearing all of these other conflicting words, like the color of your skin determines how free you can be. And because of the color of your skin, you know, and that uh, America is this racist country, and all of that affects you. It does. It affected me. I wasn't totally buying into it because I came from a family that believed in God, so I knew that something was wrong with that. I grew up watching my father work hard. Three, he, he, he basically averaged about two and a half jobs, like growing up. He worked hard, I, I saw that. And it was a conflicting thing for me. You know, you know, I'm trying to process all of these things, like if that is true, he's working and he's doing all of these things. So growing up, that was the message for me. And then I got married. I, I started having kids. And, and then I fell into that stage of being dependent on the government. And it was a loving brother of mine who took me aside and shared with me that the way that I'm living is not pleasing to God. And that it is my responsibility as a man to provide for my family. And that broke me. And that hit me hard. So I worked full time, went to school full time, became a tradesman, by the way, <laughs> right? You know, and I got myself off of government aid. And believe it or not, the, the lady fought me for 45 minutes. She did not want me off the government aid. I told her I was done. I was done with everything, with all of that. But she fought me, she fought, and she ended up losing, you know? But, and then I am here because I believe in the American dream that Nowhere, nowhere else can a nobody, you can come with nothing, all right? You can come with nothing and you can be somebody. Nowhere else within the world where you can do that. And so, 2020 was not how I planned it to be. And I don't really think that's the case for any of us here, right? So with so 2020, I had plans and goals and all that stuff, but something happened, you know, and uh, I got so 2020 happened and all of this stuff happened, and for years and years I 
have always complained about our our you know government and just how and just how things are happening. It just really concerns me. But uh, I remember the I remember the email that I got about running for Senate District 67. I remember like trashing it, and then. And hour later, an hour later, somebody sent me the exact same same email. <laughs> you know who you are. <laughs> sent me the exact same email and was like, "What do you think?" And at that time within my life, we all have an opportunity for us to answer a call upon our upon our lives okay and we can choose to ignore that call or we can choose to rise to the occasion and i remember just saying yes and joining in and uh everything happened within about 24 hours and it took me a while to actually process it so here i am so what are you getting in a candidate, right? As a candidate, I believe in our American Constitution. I believe that America is the best and greatest country on this planet. America has the best thing to offer because I am a living example of it, okay? I came from a, from a war-torn country. And, and I came here, I have goals and dreams and I am living it. I am, okay? So as a candidate, I hold our constitution in such high regards that I teach it on Monday nights. I do, you know, I teach it because I believe, it, believe in it so much that, that we do have the greatest country alive but it's up to us to keep that going and it concerns me so my message is is that I would like to unite us again okay because we have so much division right now and you guys already know Minneapolis knows Minneapolis knows about it right we have division but the thing is is that we have lost our heritage. We have one thing in common that we are all Americans. We are, all right? And we need to restore that again because, because nowadays being an American almost is shameful. It's, it's literally trashed on. And just like a family, every family has its issues, right? Okay. But America has dealt with those issues. But we do it as family. We do it as Americans. Okay, so I am here to represent you because your rights, as a candidate, I will protect your constitutional God-given rights. Okay? I am here for you and that government is supposed to protect those rights. And if you think government gives us rights, you are in bondage. Government does not give us our rights. They protect our rights. We, government uh, is supposed to be the public servant. And America has afforded me so much to live a life that I have not or could not even imagine that I would like to give back. And this is my way of doing it because we are in a such hard and crazy times right now. So please come alongside of me, okay? Come alongside of me and help me through this. But I promise you one thing, that if you vote for me, and that if you consider me, that your constitutionally God-given rights will be 
protected. Right? So thank you so much. Before you go, again, it's just a little bit over time, not much. Just kidding. Again, as Alexander said, um, there's a team that's together. The team will continue to expand. But the key is going to be uh, here on the east side, whether you live here or not, hopefully you support him. But there's, gonna, there's a lot of work ahead of us. But if you know St. Paul, and I was just told this the other day, that East St. Paul is the most conservative part of St. Paul. And it also has a significant amount of also independence as well.